gals, and every here for Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you may on Twitter the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale. So I know that I said I know that I said that um, this is gonna be Jesse, but we've finished two of the paths, Jesse and Marion, and we have not finished Grace. So I'm thinking why don't I make this a Grace run? So this will be a Grace run from start to finish, and then we'll do Jesse, and then Mary, and then any other characters that they actually have, because there's more romanceable characters as far as I'm aware. But anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Yeah, what's this frickin' nonsense? Why this music is catching on with the city folk is beyond me. I order a second pint as the bizarre spectacle unfolds. It must be one of Bulgare's schemes, trying to turn Acta Craig into the trendiest nightlife destination in the Highlands, or something. Almost as soon as the flapper's finished her dance, she's moved on to the next. A few old but fascinated men are starting to crowd around her, and I feel pity for this out-of-place out girl. Whoever she is, she doesn't belong out here in the country. I stay and watch until my thirst is slaked and my thoughts have steadied. Downing the rest of my pint, sated, I remind myself that I ought to be going. I work my way to the bar to settle my tie, but Bulgare refuses payment. I earned it, he says, giving him my heartfelt thanks to take one last look at the twirling red girl, wondering how someone like her found, a, found herself at a place like this. Then with a quick adjustment of my cap, I take my leave with a stag and nanny. Yeah, shake it, girl. There's Gran! Night has fallen as Hazel and I approach the old homestead. I feel a pinch of guilt at this late hour as I see a small silhouette framed against the open door. Gran is outside on the front steps, sweeping at almost nothing, yet dust still scatters about. She looks up at me and waves. I return the gesture, thankful my journey is over at long last. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Closer now, I can see she looks as tired as I feel, but there are tears of joy in her eyes. Don't be sorry, Malcolm. It's enough that you are here. I never knew if I would see you again. I dismount Hazel, who graciously allowed me to ride her back from town without bother. She nearly shakes free of my grasp. Grant helps rein in the mare and secure her to the house post. A feisty, a feisty one, isn't she? Oh, dearie, are these really all your things? She weighs the, the small rucksack that had been slung across Hazel's back. Aye, they patted me on the back and sent me on my way without much more than the clothes on my back. But they're sharp clothes, are they not? I pat off the dust, straighten my collar, and strike a goofy salute. My grandmother laughs. How are you, Gran? Dear Agnes responds with loving embrace, much stronger than I imagined she could muster. Her limbs are so frail, but all muscle and sinew. Her head barely reaches my height. There's so little left here. To have you back is a miracle all itself. I stroke her head, her silk and white hair, as she weeps softly. It's my pleasure. We hold each other for a little while longer, sharing the profound feelings of relief and reunion. Then she ushers me inside. Thank you, all. Water time. Come, come in before you catch a cold. My senses are overwhelmed by the sights, smells, and sounds of my childhood. A crackling fire, a bubbling pot of stew on the stove, the simple decor of country living. Sure, a few stones have come loose and holes are forming between the rafters, so I can see my future plans already. By and large, nothing's changed, except how empty the nest has become. Gran, I'm so sorry about Grandad. How have you been managing? She turns from the stove and waggles a ladle at me. We'll have none of that tonight, young man. A weary traveler should not dwell on what's behind us. Despite the nausea at the pub, I welcome the bowl of stew Grand places in front of me. It tastes even better than I remembered. She pours me a whiskey to down it all, and every part of me is warmed through. Tonight you will sleep well, in a warm bed. Every night now, for as long as you want it. She laughs. Even if that be after I leave this earth. Cry! What a thing to say! Ah, but it's a true thing. Something I realized after your mom and dad moved to the city and your grandfather passed. This life we have is finite. I cherish all of it now, as you must as well. It's as if she's been feeling around for my soul. I knew where to look for it. She hit the right spot on the first try. Yes, I know all too well. I take her hand in mine, both of us tipsy from food, drink, and good company. Let's have this moment, this moment here. Grandmother pulls me close again, and holds me the way Mom used to. I don't know if I could ever bear leaving this table. We laugh, we cry, and we stay up late into the night. Hmm. As night turns to day. 
Alrighty. On to the next day. I wake up to the sound of a kettle coming to a boil. The sun is yet to fully rise, but I can smell the tea brewing in something fresh baked. It's a challenge getting myself up out of bed. The goose down quilt, even if it's bare threads, is so warm and comfortable I've not slept so well since, well, the last time I slept here. This is my room growing up. It's hardly recognizable now. My old things have long since been stowed who knows where. It's mostly empty save for some odds and ends. Well, if I, will myself, I, I finally will myself out from under the covers. Throw on some proper clothes and head into the common room. Good morning, young man. I have biscuits on the hearth and potted eggs on the table. Fresh cream in the pitcher, sugar cubes in the jar. Thank you so much, Gran. I give her a good morning embrace and she squeezes me tightly again. An impressive and gentle vice grip. When she steps back, she is suddenly all business. Now, I've already fed Hazel her breakfast. Once the dishes are done, I'll go tend the herd and clean the table. Second meal, water time. All right, y'all, and we have returned. All right. <clears throat> Gran, why don't you let me take care of all that? You don't need to run the farm all by yourself anymore. She sighs and shows her stubborn streak. It's not in me to ask for help. Times are hard and everyone has enough to worry about already. I don't want to burden anyone. Oof, excuse me. Not even you. In this farm, if this farm becomes too much for us to handle, it's always an option to give it up. Sell and join your mother and father in the city. Nonsense. This is your home. We'll make it work. So how about it? Sergeant Malcolm Campbell reporting for duty. Well, then, soldier. I, well, I suppose we could use some things for this week. Perhaps you might go to the market for me today. To start, I wink and nod towards my breakfast. I'd better eat fast, then, if I'm to beat the crowds. I chew and guzzle until the empty plate rattles and the cup and pot have not one drop left. You're an angel, Malcolm. Laughing, I stand up, shoulder an old overcoat of Grandad's and give Gran a peck on the forehead. And don't you forget it, I'll be back soon, Gran. I sit off across the meadow to the table, to the stable. My boots lose their footing a few times in the wet mud, the mist still settling in the air. Outside, and the sun is cresting the hills across the loch. It is edged with pink, and I find myself muttering the ancient rhyme. Red sky at night, shepherd's delight. Red sky in the morning, shepherd's warning. Passing the herd, I can hear cuds chomping, and droopy lips braying. Grant told me we hold three dozen head of cattle, but from here I can only count twenty or so. Is there count off, or was it just a wee bit of reassurance through exaggeration? Opening the stable door is harder than I remember. I steel myself and try to get a grip on the damp wood. As the door slides open, I see Hazel standing impatiently in her stall. I'm reminded of the difficulty Gran and I had stabling her before we retired last night. Morning, my grumpy friend. How was your first night's stay at the Chateau de Campbell? She snorts. Poor Hazel. Now in the light, I can see the drafty old stables in much worse shape than the homestead. Sunlight beams through the countless holes in the rafters, patching the barn's roof. You have a chore to prioritize. Ugh, no finer accommodations for miles. <laughs> Don't you worry, we'll take care of this place together. It'll be tip-top shape in no time. Her head rolls dramatically as she flicks the mane off her eyes. She apparently isn't amused, but I can't help but laugh. Oh, come on now, it's not that bad. Now, let's get you hitched to the cart. It's day, it's market day today. We've got a lot to pick up. Hazel nudges my chin with her velvety muzzle. I nestle into it, and my hands and arms reach instinctively to hold her head. I hold my creature, listen to her nicker into my chest. Watch billows of her breath float in, the fr float in the frigid air, and smell the damp hay in the stable. Then her head buckles, b buckles back in a plucky toss, nearly knocking me to the ground. Second meal. Pink apple and lemon. Man, this is good. Mmm. This is the spot. So that's how it's going to be, eh, Miss Hazel? So be it. A strong woman has never bothered me. Get her treats at the market. Yes, Grace, here I come. I'm a bang fish girl. I remember the draw. I remember the drill manual I was issued at section on horse discipline. It worked well enough for all the good it did us once we were dismounted and dug in. Those who act with inhumanity, they obey reluctantly. Those who treat them well are always repaid by obedience and ready action. All right, I get it. You still don't trust me. I'll tell you what. If you behave, maybe we can find you a special treat at the market. How does that sound? Hazel eyes me skeptically, but noticeably calms as I carefully fasten her saddle. a girl, that's more like it. Now, time to get on the road.
Hazel is none too thrilled about towing the small cart, but she only bucks a few times on the ride into town, so I consider it a success. The square is already bustling with activity when we arrive. It's the only market that's side the lock. People have flocked from all corners of the Vale to stock up on supplies. The morning air is full of sounds and air, sounds of animal carts, women quibbling over prices, children fighting or screaming with delight, and old men drunk on early beers and life. I tie my mare to a post and dive into the fray. My first stop is the millinery booth, since I realize I don't have a proper hat to wear out in public or in the fields. Glancing down at the milliner's wares, it suddenly dawns on me who is standing behind the cart. Oh, hello again. Hi there. What a pleasant surprise to see you again. She fidgets with the hat a bit, burrows her, burrows her hands into her coat pockets and blushes. You as well? Are, are you looking to buy a hat? Yes, I was looking to get something sharp. Do you have any recommendations? Well, the flat caps seem to be popular. Comfortable. I would say so. What about the one, one you've got? Oh, this was custom made. It does fit you quite well. Her blush deepens even further. Thanks. You know you'd look good in a green one, I think. It matches your eyes. Then, that is the one for me. I try on the green wool cap, placing it right atop my head. It's a wonderful fit. I have to agree, it's very comfortable. I hope it looks as good as it feels. That it does. I start fumbling around for some pocket change and a few coins spill loose on the ground. It takes an effort to bend down and scoop them up. My back protests from yesterday's long ride. You know, I don't think I've had a chance to properly introduce myself. My name's Malcolm. And my name's Murdoch. It's a right fine cup you picked out there. Yours for just five shillings. The gruff voice makes me jump. Standing and turning back to the stall, I see the girl is gone. In her place is an older gentleman. Um, hello, yes, this will be the one, please. I'd like to thank the girl who works here for her suggestion. As he pockets my coins, he scrunches his bearded face into a puzzled expression. Hmm, be begging your pardon, lad. What girl? She was right here just a moment ago. I gaze across into the pool of market goers, and while I don't see the girl's hat bobbing among them, I do spot a few recognizable faces. A golden blonde with oval glasses stands out in the crowd. I believe it to be my childhood teacher, although she doesn't look a day older than I remember. Cheesemonger, on the other hand, is just as old as I remember. His grizzled hands are barely strong enough to cut the wheel, and his brows are so long I can't even fathom how he sees. And there is the withered boy hawking newspapers out of a woven basket. <clears throat> Excuse me. He has grown, he has grown from a tiny, tiny young one into a sickly looking boy, poor lad. I'm hesitant to approach any of these folk from years past. Who's to say, who's to say they know who I am anymore? I dare say I hardly know myself. Then I see a young woman, arms piled high with groceries, cloth and assorted sundries. Moving through the crowd with a purpose, her arms tremble under the weight. Instinctively, I reach out to catch a sack of flour before it hits the ground. Ah, oh, I'm so sorry! Not the problem. I wouldn't want you to lose that. The teetering stack is stable again for now. She manages to produce a smiling frown, ripe with humor, dismay, and impatience. Oh, we go ahead and pause it, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Kate Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our next site for more content as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye